Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to my YouTube channel. My name is Sari and you are watching my knitting podcast videos. Today I'm gonna be talking about um, what I've been knitting lately and I've also been writing quite a lot of patterns so I'm gonna be talking about that. And um, I also have a giveaway, um, I'll show you. I'm giving away uh, in collaboration with KVG Woolworks, uh, these three gorgeous skeins of undyed fin sheep, baby fin sheep wool. It's super, super, super soft. Um, and this giveaway is because I have reached a uh, thousand subscribers here on YouTube. Yay! Uh, thanks to everybody who has su subscribed to my channel, everybody who has been watching my videos. Every single view uh, really means a lot to me and all the comments you have been posting. And also um, I have uh, over 6,000 um, followers on Instagram, so that's why I reached out to KVG Woolworks and uh, proposed this little giveaway to celebrate those milestones. But I'm gonna be talking about the giveaway a little bit later, otherwise um, you'll just watch the giveaway part and skip everything else, so um, trying to be a bit more um, or have a little bit more business sense, so I'll talk about something else first and then I'll get back to the giveaway. Um, so I'm gonna be talking about what I've been knitting and um, designing and patterns that I have been writing. Um, when I first uh, started this channel um, and making these YouTube videos, um, I felt really silly. I still feel really silly sitting here and um, talking kind of to myself and filming myself doing it at the same time. Um, I'm not sure if it comes across um, in the video format, but I'm actually I'm a really shy person. Um, I used to be so shy at school that uh, even though I knew the right answer, uh, in the class. Um, I just couldn't um, lift my hand and uh, like show that I know the answer because I was so mortified that I had to uh, speak up in front of the whole classroom even though I knew the answer was right so I wasn't afraid of making fool of myself in that sense that um, I, did, I, I said the wrong thing but I was just um, so scared of the whole thing that everybody was watching me and listening to what I said that I was always really quiet and um, I'm, I often hear nowadays that people don't, when they meet me, they don't really um, understand or get that I'm an, I'm an introvert, but I really am, I'm a really big introvert. I hate all uh, social gatherings, I hate small dog, I'm really, really bad at it. And um, sometimes people tell me that uh, I might come across um, proud or um, uninterested in people because um, I just like, I hate those small talky, um, get to know your, get to know other people kind of like social gathering things and often I can't come up with anything to say so um, um, I'm just quiet and just like looking what is happening mm, but this has been a really good exercise for me and I'm really proud of myself that I started this channel. It's been um, such a good, uh, like I said, such, such a good exercise for me. Um, it doesn't feel that bad because kind of, uh, I feel like I'm talking to myself. I love talking, <laughs> but um, not talking to strangers. Mm, so I'm kind of pretending here that I'm just talking to myself. Um, I'm not sure if that makes me crazy <laughs> that I say that I enjoy talking to myself, but um, well. Anyway, when I started this uh, YouTube channel, um, I had been thinking about making a YouTube channel for a long time. 
um, actually I started filming little videos um, maybe four months before I actually started this channel uh, so that's about one year ago um, I started filming stuff but um, it took me well that four months to gather the nerve to actually publish anything um, on YouTube um, but there's something if that I have learned if you want to do something like if you if you have been dreaming about starting your own YouTube channel or writing your own knitting patterns or anything that you feel um, is a bit out of ordinary and you think uh, what other people will say about you or think about you it's usually mostly in your own head that's something that I have noticed um, during the past few years um, you are the biggest hindrance to your own dreams so if there is something you want to do um, I really recommend trying and reaching for it uh, trying to make it happen um, for example um, when I started to write patterns um, nobody ever said uh, to me that oh you can't do this or why are you doing this or who do you think you are because you are doing this um, everything I got was words of encouragement so the biggest fear was only inside me that people would judge me for doing that that thing and the same goes with um, starting the YouTube channel when I first started it um, a couple of people who I know commented something about it nobody commented anything negative but they just like commented oh you have started this and uh, uh, that's so great of you and um, and I watched it and you speak really good English and stuff like that so like just they made a point um, of watching my videos but nothing like not, not, nothing negative I got some really good um, um, like critique that I took into consideration and made things better but but other than that all the feedback has only been positive and after the, after I had um, made a couple of videos nobody commented about it anymore so it was a fact Sari makes YouTube videos and it wasn't um, out of ordinary anymore for me to be making YouTube videos for my family at first um, my parents are quite old-fashioned in that sense that they were like why are you putting your face uh, aren't you afraid that somebody starts talking you and stuff like that uh, maybe they <laughs> thought that I would be making a fool of myself on YouTube but after a while they realized that nothing like that happened and this is the 20th 21st century and this is just stuff that people do nowadays so there's nothing um, there's nothing like um, like I said out of ordinary of that anymore so after a while not even my parents comment anything about me making YouTube videos they don't tell me I'm a silly girl or anything like that anymore so uh, what I was saying is that if you really want to do something just go on and do it it doesn't matter if you are the most uh, socially awkward person there is like me um, I think there's a niche for everyone and uh, a place for everyone so um, my motto in knitting and designing and also with this um, my little knitting podcast has been that if I like it if I enjoy it there are other people who will enjoy it too there are so many people on this world so it's like a really 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 small chance that you are the only one person in the whole wide world who enjoys that one specific thing if there if you like it there will be others too so just go on and follow your dreams that is my 
my uh, words of encouragement and my motto. Um, but I'll start first by showing what you what I've been knitting lately. Um, I've been showing you this Voyager pullover and I have now knitted the front and the back. The back is uh, slightly longer than the front so there's a split hem and I have seamed uh, the side seams already and I'm really into turtlenecks at the moment so I made this um, longer collar. It's not uh, really long enough to, well it is long enough to turn twice but I wanted it to it be more like this like funeral neck. And the next thing I'm gonna be knitting are the sleeves. So I was thinking whether I will continue with the same uh, crisscross cable pattern on the sleeves or make them in reverse stockinet stitch but I decided that uh, it would look silly because this has this all over pattern at the moment and if the sleeves were different I thought it would be a bit silly looking so I decided to continue the pattern on the sleeves as well and I've been using um, this is Ginger Twist Studios um, Ginger's hand dyed sheep is Aran and the colorway is called Voyager and like I have mentioned before uh, in a previous episode I really like the name Voyager especially because this is a souvenir yarn I bought when we were in Edinburgh uh, in September so I'm calling the sweater Voyager as well. So this is gonna be my um, thick and warm Aran weight um, turtleneck winter cardigan and the color is like this it shifts from like really deep uh, petrol blue to like um, a beautiful forest green depending on the, the surrounding light so here on camera I think it looks quite bluish at the moment but but in certain lights it's like this almost like olive green so it is such a gorgeous beautiful color but this is what I've been knitting lately um, it's ki kind of nice I usually knit with small needles and this has been knitted with 5.5 millimeter and 6.06 millimeter needles so uh, it kind of feels like it's flying off my needles um, other thing I've been working on I started a mitten project um, I usually knit one or two pairs of mittens every year and I start knitting mittens around here when the weather weather gets colder. I um, have a really sensitive skin so when it starts to become minus degrees uh, Celsius minus degrees like it's at the moment it's something like minus two minus three over there outside my fingers um, start to get really dry and and uh, I get rash on my hands so that's why I usually knit mittens at this time of year. Um, I have knitted one. Say hello to Luna. Um, she's say, saying hello to me again here. So I have knitted the first mitten and, and um, started the second one but I only managed to knit like the first centimeter or so last night. I cast it on last night for this one. So it will take a little bit longer for me to um, finish the second mitten. And the yarn I'm using is this gorgeous um, bronze ochre color um, lamb's wool that I got from Camille Lavad. Um, I ordered some some of her um, the thinner um, lamb's wool uh, a while back and Camilla generously popped a skein of the um, her new thicker yarn base the Camilla Vard uh, lamb's wool uh, 9-3 so it's this one for me to try and uh, the colorway is called Messing so 
think it's probably bronze, some metallic shade anyway. So this is what I've been making. It has this uh, unsymmetric cable pattern here. So there's this like wave and this double wave on the other side. And um, a gusset thumb and pearled um, palm. And this uh, cuff is folded double. It started with a provisional cast on and it's knitted in twisted rib and then the edge is um, um, joined together here, so it's double thick around your wrist. And, and here's the irregular um, or unsymmetrical cable pattern. And the yarn is really amazing. It's super soft and rustic and wooly at the same time. And I absolutely love this colorway. Um, what was I going to say? I forgot. Um, I'm calling this pattern Alta, which means waves in Finland, Finnish. So there's this uh, like wave pattern. And other stuff I've been knitting. This is also something that I just cast it on. I've done all the math for a new sweater design and so I finally cast it on, so you can see I've only needed the first few rounds of the bottom ripping. And this is gonna be a cable sweater. And the yarn I'm using is from Studio Miss. Uh, this is something she um, dyed for me. Um, this is a custom, custom dye job. Um, it's a DK uh, base and and the colorway, since it, it's a custom dye job, it's called Sari. So I love it. I, I sent her a couple of uh, inspirational pictures of the kind of yarn I wanted. I wanted uh, something that is kind of off white, um, natural color, but with tiny, tiny speckles of like really dark gray and blue. And this is the yarn she dyed for me, and it's absolutely lovely gorgeous um, and i really enjoy knitting with it it's super soft and as it's merino base it's really uh, like stretchy and springy and the stitch definition is absolutely wonderful so i'm pretty sure this is gonna be wonderful for knitting um cables and here's my new project bag this one is from Hanna-Lisa Haferkamp, um, HLH Designs, and I bought this uh, a little while ago. And this is the Elizabeth bag, medium-sized, and the other bag I showed you quickly. This is from Rudernecht, this is the Tuva makeup bag actually, but I've been using this as a project bag. This is my favorite project, a smaller project bag at the moment. Um, my previous episode was about project bags, so if you want to see what project bags I'm using and what I think of them, and also I made a quite quite a long review about fringe wheel bags, so check out my previous episode about my project bags if you're interested in that. Um, that's actually what I've been knitting at the moment. I have um, a couple of other um, whips, but some of them are commissions and some are just like I haven't made any progress on them for a while, so I'm not gonna be showing them to you. Oh, I forgot to show you one thing about the mitten. Um, I'll show you my mitten blockers. Um, I made them myself, so um, for socks, I have bought these bunny rabbit sock blockers so there's they are like real sock blockers um, but like i said i only need a pair or maximum two pairs of mittens every year so i haven't um, uh, invested in a real pair of mitten blockers so i made <laughs> myself this is the thumb and this is the mitten so this is just a piece of cardboard in in the uh, like shape and size of my hand 
and I have it's not pretty I know it's, it's just it's not supposed to be pretty so I just put uh, like tape over it so even though when I wet block the mittens it doesn't get ruined because the tape is uh, covering it and also a similar one for um, the thumb and it's also covered in tape so um, when I um, wet, made this wet and then just like put uh, put the uh, thumb in place and also here's the um, mitten being blocked without any uh, real um, mitten blockers. I used to do the same with socks so I had uh, like traced the shape of a sock that I use uh, slightly um, um, like the slightly the same shape of the sock and covered it with with tape in the same fashion but then I decided to buy real sock blockers. First of all these are so super cute and um, I need more socks every year than I do mittens so I decided that it's worth investing in a real pair of um, mitten blockers and of course these look so much better in Instagram photos than these um, my ugly um, handmade <laughs> thing is um, let's talk about uh, giveaway here for a while and then I'll show you my, what new, new yarn I have in my stash and what I've been designing lately. Mm. I first met uh, Kati from um, KVG Woolworks um, last summer. Uh, we had this uh, knitting pop-up meet in my hometown that me and my friend have been organizing. It was the second uh, pop-up meet of its kind and uh, Kati from KVG Woolworks uh, was selling her yarns and I think we really hit it off immediately. Uh, she's such a lovely public personality and uh, I really enjoyed talking with her and she dyes absolutely gorgeous yarns. So when I was thinking about wanting to have a giveaway um, for, um, for the 1000 uh, subscribers plus 6000 Instagram followers, um, Kati was the first person I thought of and I asked if she wanted to collaborate with me for a giveaway and this is the yarn I got from her and um, it's absolutely gorgeous. I, I'm not sure how I can part with it. It's like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, it's super soft so it's like baby fin sheep wool and it's um, ethically sourced and it's been um, only washed and uh, treated with orange oil so it has a slight citrus scent super soft and it is um, undyed wool. It is white and black uh, fin sheep, baby fin sheep wool uh, spun together. And um, I asked Kati to send over um, some information about her, um, her, her um, dyeing process and her inspiration and her values and when I was reading through what she wrote to me um, I realized that it was almost like I was reading my own thoughts so I really think this collaboration is uh, very special and uh, it's the best <laughs> I could pick because her values and thoughts are exactly same as mine. Um, she tries to support local little small farmers um, who uh, raise um, native breeds, so fin sheep, wool especially. 
um, there are there's a lot of uh, Finnish wool available but just a small part of them are actually like fin sheep wool um, others are uh, fin sheep uh, mixed with other um, breed, breeds of like um, meat those sheep that you grow for meat so it's not as soft as the pure fin sheep wool uh, for Kati and as for me it is important to know uh, where the wool comes from. Um, uh, like I said, this is ethically sourced and um, that is also very important for me. Uh, for both of us, it is important to know um, how the sheep were, uh, who gave the wool, how they lived, uh, that they were well looked after and happy. Uh, Kati is trying to support small um, farmers who grow native breeds. Um, Kati also told me that she gets her inspiration from nature. Um, she spends her summers at sea sailing. So the Finnish um, islands and sea colors often come true in her uh, dyeing job. She's been an indie dyer for the past six years and uh, she's trying to um, get to the point that where, where she can only use um, fin Finnish uh, native sheep breeds. Um, but as a small indie dyer, uh, she is not there yet, but she's trying to get there. Um, she also wrote to me that she is uh, dreaming about um, being a dyer like full time and um, uh, um, as, like not having a day job but doing that full time. And that's also my dream, like not being a dyer, but. Um, I also have a different day job than uh, knitting or designing and that's also my dream to one day be able to do this as a living. So if you want to win these three skeins of um, baby fin sheep wool from KBG Woolworks, um, these are uh, 100 gram skeins and they have 280 meters per skein. So if you want to win one of these, um, just comment below and tell me what you would want to make with them. So that's the giveaway and I'll be picking the winner um, next week. On let's say I'll pick it on Friday the 7th of uh, December so that's the uh, deadline for the giveaway so go and comment below this video tell me what you what you would be making of these skeins um, here at the end of the video I'll just quickly show you um, my new yarns. Um, I visited the Tampere Handcraft Fair a couple of weeks ago and from there I got this, these three, three skeins of gold uh, deco wool and this is um, indica dyed lamb's wool. Um, this is on um, uh, gray base, uh, dyed on gray base, so the indica makes the yarn this like uh, grayish, bluish green. And that's these are gonna be become a little sweater project I have um, been uh, designing. Also, I got these lovely skeins of Skein Queen. Fluff, and uh, this is kid silk, uh, kid mohair and silk, and there are four skeins of them. So this will become. Um, I I've been 
thinking about making this like really uh, minimalistic um, pullover. So these are gonna become that. And also these two from Martin's lab. So this is a, a cozy comfy merino. This is a sock yarn and the colorway is called Candy Sparrow. And this is super soft um, with beautiful sheen. This is the Tibetan DK. So it's a uh, super wash merino silk and yak. And I'm gonna be making a hat probably for my mom as a Christmas present with this one. This is something I've shown you here um, earlier. This is my Utu hat and it's knitted with Wolfolk Flette. It's a buckle yarn and um, this is a new pattern that I just released today on Ravelry. So if you want to knit one for yourself, uh, I'll link the, the pattern, Ravelry pattern link here below the video. But this is my newest design. Not, I already knitted this one, uh, I think it was in August, but I've been just like super lazy these um, past few months. Um, I've had a rough time at, at my day job and I've been really tired in the evenings, so I haven't had as much time to or energy to do stuff that I thought I would have. So knitting work has been piling. Of course, it's not uh, work in that sense that um, I'm not. I'm only working for myself. And if my deadlines about releasing knitting patterns um, don't hold, it's only it's only myself that that suffers from it in a way. Um, I've been trying to concentrate more on getting more sleep and trying to be outside more and spend time with my son instead of uh, boring myself in work. So um, I've been trying to be more merciful with myself and forgiving and, and giving myself time to do other stuff than just knit and write patterns. So I have a lot of patterns that I've been writing, but I just haven't had the energy to like make the final checks about the pattern and the final adjustments and taking photos. Like um, I usually do everything myself. Um, from writing the pattern to knitting the sample to taking the photos with self timer and modeling them and editing the photos and editing the patterns and doing the layout and everything so I'm like this one woman band in that sense and when I've been really tired uh, first of all I don't I haven't felt like posing for photos so um, also that has been a reason why I haven't had so much um, pattern writing done as I would have wanted to do but I've been trying to get my act together lately and start um, checking things off my to-do list and first of all um, I have finally um, released the pattern for this hat so it's now available on Ravelry. Another thing that has been um, waiting for the final touches has been on this, this pullover I have showed you here on Instagram and on YouTube many times. And I only now finished writing the pattern and started uh, just two days ago. I posted the call for test knitters and, and um, the test knitting has now started with this one. It was actually a bit hard to find test knitters for the sweater. Um, I don't know if it's because um, people want to knit top-down sweaters and seamless and this one is seamed or is it because um, 
it's so close to Christmas and everybody is really busy but for some reason this was the first time that I had a hard time finding um, the knitters. I hope it's not because you don't like my design but for some other reason but finally I found all the test knitters I need so thank you everybody who volunteered for this knitting. So this is coming, the pattern is coming um, at the beginning of February. I made quite a long test knitting deadline because of the Christmas and other holidays, uh, New Year's and so on. So the test knitting deadline is until the end of January. So the pattern will be available at the beginning of February. Um, there are a couple of more things. At the moment I've been writing the pattern for this Helene um, cardigan. I showed you this in my previous video. I was wearing it and this is a super simple um, silk mohair cardigan um, with uh, just like minimalistic details like this neckband that continues from the front to the back and there are no shoulder seams so there's like kitchener stitch here on the shoulders and then a very simplistic neckband here you can see or bottom band I mean so this is something that I'm currently in the midst of writing and I got the yarn as uh, yarn support from Shibui Knits and what the yarns I've been using for this are Shibui Knits Sima and Shibui Knits um, Silk Cloud held together and both are uh, the colorway Ash. So this is a pattern that is gonna be available for test knitting quite soon. I'm still thinking about uh, people being busy before Christmas so I'm contemplating whether I will post the call for test knitters before or after Christmas, but let's let's see how long it takes for me to finish the pattern first. Um, I had some leftover yarn from that uh, Helen cardigan, and um, the yarn is so super um, wonderful. Uh, so I didn't want to um, just like put the leftover skeins in my stash so I decided to make a little hat and I made this uh, turban it has this um, cable pattern on one side and then this crisscross feature here at the front and this is the back side of the turban I have this top knot at the moment so I can't really show you how it looks like it looks really funny just like try to ignore the top knot but here you can see how it looks just like let's pretend I don't have this top knot over here but I'm gonna write the pattern for this one unless all of you think that um, there are already enough of turban patterns on Ravelry and nobody wants to wear turbans anyway so in that case um, I'm not gonna write it but I really I, I really like it and I think it makes me look uh, super sophisticated <laughs> so that's what I've been working on as well mm. I'm gonna have a couple of more test knitter calls quite soon one of them is for this hat and the second one is for this one if you've been watching my previous um, YouTube episodes you might remember me knitting a lot of top-down hats during the summer and these are two of them. One of the top-down hat patterns I have already published. It's the 2 times 2 hat pattern. Uh, you can find it on Ravelry. And I really, uh, I got like really uh, into that technique and tried to uh, find the perfect way to knit a hat from top-down. So this is similar to the two times two hat except that it has a six times three ribbing so it's the ribbing is wider and the uh, yarn i have used for this one is um madeline tosh uh, tosh merino light and the colorway is the lovely aria color 
um, it has this uh, like different shades of steely grays um, with um, speckles of um, like lemony or almost like um, almost like fluorescent yellow and um, purple speckles so such a beautiful colorway and this is another um, top-down hat uh, in the, instead of a pointy beginning it has this uh, flat beginning so this is started the same way as um, toe up socks the same cast on method and it only has the increases on each size and this has a, a three a two times one ribbing so two knit and pearl one and uh, the colorway for this one is Casagerho Pom Poms Merina Singles and uh, the color is called Jäkälä so I'm gonna have test knitting calls for these two hats very soon so if you are interested in that um, go and join my Ravelry group because I'm posting all the information about upcoming test knits over there just wondering if I still have something else to show you actually I do this is the last thing um, these are socks that I knitted over a year ago these were part of Making Stories Socks uh, 2018 ebook and these are my Ascent socks they are knitted from um, toe up and the pattern can be found in that ebook and also individually uh, on my, in my Ravelry page and I just got the samples back um, yesterday in the post so I wanted to show them to you so um, I've been using um, Retrosaria Mondim sock yarn for this and um, this is the hot pink colorway I think it's 108 the number of the, the colorway and it has this really simple lace eyelet pattern all over the sock so Ascent, Ascent socks and they can be found on Ravelry I'll just put the link below here um, also this one you might remember seeing this one um, on my Instagram and here on YouTube earlier um, this is something I started a year and a half ago and I needed half a front and then I got distracted and um, started knitting a lot of other stuff and until the point that it had been um, left untouched for one year and I decided that uh, I will either frog it or continue knitting it and um, I decided to continue working on it and then I finally finished it um, at the end of August or very beginning of September and it was supposed to become just like um, a traditional um, white um, cabled pullover I can show you it has this cable pattern here on the front with these bubbles and um, stitch on the sides and on the sleeves and the back has only these two uh, cables running parallel to each other and then stitch on the back so it was supposed to be um, a pullover that would have this pattern uh, both on front and back but then I decided I didn't want these bubbles on my back <laughs> it might be really irritating when you are sitting and the bubbles just like press your back and and I was gonna have something here on the sleeves as well but last year um, or last winter almost a year ago Karen Templar had the uh, Fringe Association um, blogs um, lock cabin knit along so I learned the lock dubbing technique 
and I got really inspired uh, by it and I was I started to think what else uh, where else I can use the pattern or the technique and when I started to uh, knit this pullover again first of all like I said I decided I didn't want to have the cable and bubble pattern on the back so I decided to make the back uh, simpler and um, also I wanted to have the sleeves more simple as well I was thinking that I would look really uh, big and bulky if I had bubbles also here on the hat uh, on my arms but um, I didn't want this to become yet another uh, white cabled pullover I already have some of those in my wardrobe for example um, my narwhal pullover and also at the same time I was uh, knitting the Brandle Hall uh, pullover from uh, the Fiber Company um, which is for uh, or I needed it in off-white lore so I didn't want yet another cabled white off-white pullover and I wanted to have some little twist so um, I used little uh, leftover pieces so this is needed in host garn super soft um, held double this is uh, the off-white color ecru and I used the same yarn in different colors for these shoulder details um, this is uh, the colorway scarab and this is uh, gold crest so they are made with a log cabin technique I knitted the sleeves up to here and then continued with garter stitch for um, with the first color up to here and then picked up stitches along the side and made little garter uh, sections here on each side so it, this is my um, cabled off-white cable pullover meeting uh, lock cabin technique and uh, I'm gonna be writing the pattern for this one as well at first I wasn't gonna write the pattern but so many people have been asking about this pullover so I decided that I'll write the pattern so if you are interested in that um, I probably won't have the pattern ready before Christmas anyway so the test knitting call will most likely come um, after Christmas but just keep following uh, my Instagram and my Ravelry group if you want updates about uh, upcoming calls for test knitters, uh, test knitting opportunities. But that's everything I have for today. Um, remember to take part uh, in my giveaway. So once again, you have the chance to win these three skeins of KVG Woolworks undyed um, baby fin sheep. Just comment below the video and tell me what you want to make with them. So um, I'll be picking the winner next week and I'm looking forward, forward to hearing your thoughts on the yarn. Bye!